you very much. Okay, um, that is uh, our last of the non-governor speakers. So now, Tim, they get 10 minutes, please. Okay, our first governor speaker is Alani Sotor. <laughs> so the real way you say it is sort of. I've been called a lot of things. And Sorry? You did really good. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lonnie Sorter. And I am one of the 452,000 people running for governor. <laughs> um, a few of my fellow candidates are here. So this should be a little bit exciting. We, we get 10 minutes to tell a story. But I got to tell you why I'm running for governor to start. My website, if you've been there, it'll tell you and about me why I'm running. And it basically just says, because I'm really angry, I'm upset, and I'm really fed up with the trash that's coming out of Sacramento. Now, my background is I run a construction management firm. And we are usually called in when a project's upside down. An owner is at its wit's end, the contractor's failing, they've overspent, they're not on schedule. We get called in to come and clean up. So it's a natural transition for me to get to Sacramento. <laughs> People laugh, but many, many times you got to tear something down before you can build it up. And we need to do that. This one party rule that has been in Sacramento for so long, led by Gavin Newsom, there's no morals, there's no principles. All the decisions they make affect every single one of us. And they have seriously underestimated each one of you. Usually people say, why? The reason they've underestimated you is because you have the power. We the people have the power. That has never changed. This country was founded upon that. What we have done is we all fell asleep behind the wheel. We've been driving down the highway for many, many years and just thinking, oh, it's going to be great. We're just going to keep working. We're going to keep doing stuff. You know, we're promised opportunity, freedom, liberty. No one's really going to. It's not going to affect us. Maybe others. Well, guess what? Now it affects all of us. We have to wake up. And our battle cry is, it's time to stand. Because it really is. We've been sitting back, waiting for other people to handle the issues. But really, every one of us, it is time to stand and fight back. Our freedoms are under attack. We, I don't need to tell you what all the problems are. Open your front door, look outside, you can see them every single day. Turn on the news. You, if, if any of you still watch TV, we don't. We cut that thing off several years ago. Best thing we ever did. We choose where we get our information. If you listen to the media, and if you listen to what's coming out of Sacramento, what you're gonna hear is, yeah, we have a few issues, it's okay. We've got a $97 billion, what? Surplus. Surplus. Yeah, <laughs> really? What about the trillion dollars that you guys have lost in the pensions? Exactly. You hit it right. They're only telling you what they want you to hear. We get deceived every single day by not hearing the truth. I only speak the truth. Now, a lot of people don't like that. But that's all I know. You can't go in and fix something unless you're willing to look at the truth. And at the end of the day, that's the only thing that we can stand upon. You never have to remember what you said last time because it doesn't change. You never have to guess what someone's thinking because they're thinking the same thing as you are. And the third thing is, it's all about us, the people, not who's sitting in Sacramento. You realize that these people want to be reelected. These are the same people that cry and complain that somebody got shot on the street. There was a, there was a shooting in Sacramento not too long ago. You guys, everybody heard about it. Well, we're going to take away all the guns. But yet these are the same people that will go to the Senate floor, the assembly, men and women, and they will pass a bill that says it's okay to murder a child up to 28 days after birth. How can, you're going to complain that some guys shot each other on the street, but yet you're going to turn right around and you're going to kill babies outside of the womb? Unacceptable. These people need to go away. Now, I may not be the greatest speaker. I may not be a professional campaign guy. 
because I'm way outside the box. Platform of my campaign is, we're gonna solve all the problems, we're gonna take out the trash, <laughs> but we're gonna fix the deception. Every one of you in this room has had, inadvertently has had a dollar figure put on your head. Sounds horrible, sounds like there's hitmen out there after you. The Republican Party, the Democratic Party, and all other political parties look at each person in this room as a dollar figure. How much can they get from you to run their campaign? You don't hear me talking about I need to raise money. It takes money, I'm not naive. Gavin Newsom's gonna spend probably $100 million to get reelected, if he can. Everybody else is out there raising money. I don't want your money. If you wanna support my campaign, vote. You can do it in your home, I disagree with, but get in your car, drive down to a polling place, mm -hmm. fill out the form, there's a little box there right next to my name that says Lonnie Sorter, check that box, that's the support I want. With inflation, gas prices, everything going on, the affordability crisis in California, your money donating to a campaign, man, you're working harder. You need to keep your money because they're taking it every time you go to the gas station. It's $150 to fill up a normal car anymore. Yep. Anybody that's been driving up and down the state like we have, all these candidates, man, we're out on the road and we're really feeling it. But we're not asking you guys to find out. At least I'm not. I, and I know my, the candidates that are in this room feel the same way. It's a bad investment on our campaign. This is probably way out of the ballpark for most people. Politicians are up here saying, give me your money, donate, we gotta do the next big thing. You can't write it off on your taxes. There's no return in it other than getting someone elected. What we need you to do is get out there, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, call everybody you know and say, pick one of these candidates, I hope it's me, but let's get somebody in office that's really gonna do what they say. And that is we're gonna clean it up, we're gonna stop the border crisis, it's simple to fix, we're gonna fix the homeless issue, that's a simple fix, we're gonna stop crime because that's a simple fix. The affordability is gonna take a little bit longer because we gotta fix the spending to start with, and that's such a mess it's gonna take more than two days to go through the budget and figure out where we're going to cut it off. <laughs> we might be able to do it in three, but I think you know two days is a little quick. The biggest thing that we have to do as a state is we all have to come together for a common goal, like-minded, and that is to get some common sense back in Sacramento. We're not here to pr make you promises. That's the other side. We're here to say that we're going to stand on principle. My principles come from the Bible. I believe Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior and I follow his principles. I apply those to my business and I will apply those to Sacramento. We're gonna get things fixed. We're gonna bring the Bible back into the school. You see, all of this nonsense came because they took God out of school. Now, whether you believe or not is not the point. The point is, they're pushing in their views or these other worldly views, but there's no truth to bring alongside those. So if you're gonna teach one, you gotta teach both. That's common sense. That's what they don't do. So what we need to do as a group is it's time to stand, let's wake up at the wheel, let's do the right thing, get out and vote. It would be amazing if everybody went to the polling place. It used to be, a proud moment when you show up mm -hmm. and you drive there. You're standing in line. I remember this. And you're talking with your neighbors and your friends and you get your little sticker and you're walking out of there, you're all proud. It's like running down the street with the big American flag going, hey, I voted, I voted. We don't do that anymore. It's all under a power grab. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop that. Day one, we're going to get rid of the state of emergency. The emergency is the mess that's in Sacramento. We're going to stop the mandates. The people that lost their jobs because they would not fall in line for a medical procedure that is their decision, we're going to put them back to work and we're going to let them on. 
And at the end of the day, we're going to hold people accountable again. Because right now there's no accountability in this state, period. We all have accountability because a lot of us all have jobs or businesses. But the other side, we're going to hold them accountable for their decisions and their actions. If a teacher is grooming children in schools, they're going to go to prison. Yeah. We're going to open the prison and put people in there. I'm on the service. I'm running for governor. Check the box right next to my name. Thank you.